Anarcho-feminism, also called anarchist feminism and anarcho-feminism, combines anarchism with feminism. It generally views patriarchy and traditional gender roles as a manifestation of involuntary coercive hierarchy that should be replaced by decentralized free association. They believe that the struggle against patriarchy is an essential part of class conflict and the anarchist struggle against the state and capitalism. In essence, the philosophy sees anarchist struggle as a necessary component of feminist struggle and vice versa. L. Susan Brown claims that as anarchism is a political philosophy that opposes all relationships of power, it is inherently feminist." Contrary to popular belief and contemporary association with radical feminism, anarcho-feminism is not an inherently militant outlook. It is described to be an anti-authoritarian, anti-capitalist, anti-oppressive philosophy, with the goal of creating an equal ground between all genders. The term, anarcho-feminism, suggests the social freedom and liberty of women, without needed dependence upon other groups or parties. Origins Mikhail Bakunin opposed patriarchy and the way the law subjected women to the absolute domination of the man. He argued that equal rights must belong to men and women, so that women could become independent and be free to forge their own way of life." Bakunin foresaw the end of the authoritarian juridical family and the full sexual freedom of women. On the other hand, Pierre-Joseph Proudhon viewed the family as the most basic unit of society and of his morality and believed that women had the responsibility of fulfilling a traditional role within the family. Since the 1860s, anarchism's radical critique of capitalism and the state has been combined with a critique of patriarchy. Anarcho-feminists thus start from the precept that modern society is dominated by men. Authoritarian traits and values, domination, exploitation, aggression and competition, are integral to hierarchical civilizations and are seen as masculine. In contrast, non-authoritarian traits and values—cooperation, sharing, compassion and sensitivity—are regarded as feminine and devalued. Anarcha-feminists have thus espoused creation of a non-authoritarian, anarchist society. They refer to the creation of a society based on cooperation, sharing and mutual aid as the feminization of society. Anarcha-feminism began with late 19th and early 20th century authors and theorists such as anarchist feminists Emma Goldman, Voltairine de Clare and Lucy Parsons. In the Spanish Civil War, an anarcha-feminist group, Mujeres Libras, free women, linked to the Federación Anarquista Ibérica, organized to defend both anarchist and feminist ideas. Sternerist Nietzschean feminist Federica Montseny held that the emancipation of women would lead to a quicker realization of the social revolution, and that the revolution against sexism would have to come from intellectual and militant future women. According to this Nietzschean concept of Federica Montseny's, women could realize through art and literature the need to revise their own roles. In China, the anarcho-feminist He Zhen argued that without women's liberation society could not be liberated. Topic. Virginia Bolton and La Vos de la Mujer In Argentina, Virginia Bolton is responsible for the publication of a newspaper called La Vos de la Mujer English, The Woman's Voice, which was published nine times in Rosario between January 8, 1896 and January 1, 1897 and was briefly revived in 1901. A similar paper with the same name was reportedly published later in Montevideo, which suggests that Bolton may also have founded and edited it after her deportation. La Voz de la Mujer described itself as "...dedicated to the advancement of communist anarchism." Its central theme was the multiple natures of women's oppression. An editorial asserted, "...we believe that in present-day society, nothing and nobody has a more wretched situation than unfortunate women." They said that women were doubly oppressed by both bourgeois society and men. Its beliefs can be seen from its attack on marriage and upon male power over women. Its contributors, like anarchist feminists elsewhere, developed a concept of oppression that focused on gender. They saw marriage as a bourgeois institution which restricted women's freedom, including their sexual freedom. 
Marriages entered into without love, fidelity maintained through fear rather than desire and oppression of women by men they hated were all seen as symptomatic of the coercion implied by the marriage contract. It was this alienation of the individual's will that the anarchist feminists deplored and sought to remedy, initially through free love and then more thoroughly through social revolution. <laughs> Individualist anarchism and the free love movement An important topic within individualist anarchism is free love. Free love advocates sometimes traced their roots back to Josiah Warren and to experimental communities, which viewed sexual freedom as a clear, direct expression of an individual's self-ownership. Free love particularly stressed women's rights since most sexual laws discriminated against women, such as marriage laws and anti-birth control measures. The most important American free love journal was Lucifer the Lightbearer 1883-1907, edited by Moses Harmon and Lois Weisbrooker. Ezra and Angela Haywood's The Word was also published from 1872-1890 and in 1892-1893. M. E. Lazarus was also an important American individualist anarchist who promoted free love. In Europe, the main propagandist of free love within individualist anarchism was Émile Armand. He proposed the concept of la camaraderie amoureuse to speak of free love as the possibility of voluntary sexual encounter between consenting adults. He was also a consistent proponent of polyamory. In France, there was also feminist activity inside French individualist anarchism as promoted by individualist feminists Marie Couge, Anna Maé, Rorette Maitregine and Sofia Zykowska. Brazilian individualist anarchist Maria Lacerda de Moura lectured on topics such as education, women's rights, free love and antimilitarism. Her writings and essays landed her attention not only in Brazil, but also in Argentina and Uruguay. In February 1923, she launched Renaschenka, a periodical linked with the anarchist, progressive and freethinking circles of the period. Her thought was mainly influenced by individualist anarchists such as Han Reiner and Émile Armand. Topic. Voltairine de Clare Voltairine de Clare November 17, 1866 to June 20, 1912, was an American anarchist writer and feminist. She was a prolific writer and speaker, opposing the state, marriage and the domination of religion in sexuality and women's lives. She began her activist career in the freethought movement. De Clare was initially drawn to individualist anarchism, but evolved through mutualism to an anarchism without adjectives." She was a colleague of Emma Goldman, with whom she respectfully disagreed with on many issues. Many of her essays were in the collected works of Voltairine de Clare, published posthumously by Mother Earth in 1914. In her 1895 lecture entitled Sex Slavery, de Clare condemns ideals of beauty that encourage women to distort their bodies and child socialization practices that create unnatural gender roles. The title of the essay refers not to traffic in women for purposes of prostitution, although that is also mentioned, but rather to marriage laws that allow men to rape their wives without consequences. Such laws make every married woman what she is, a bonded slave, who takes her master's name, her master's bread, her master's commands, and serves her master's passions. Topic. Emma Goldman. Although she was hostile to first-wave feminism and its suffragist goals, Emma Goldman advocated passionately for the rights of women and is today heralded as a founder of anarcho-feminism. In 1897, she wrote, I demand the independence of woman, her right to support herself, to live for herself, to love whomever she pleases, or as many as she pleases. I demand freedom for both sexes, freedom of action, freedom in love and freedom in motherhood. In 1906, Goldman wrote a piece entitled, The Tragedy of Woman's Emancipation, in which she argued that traditional suffragists and first-wave feminists were achieving only a superficial good for women by pursuing the vote and a movement from the home sphere. She also writes that in the ideal world women would be free to pursue their own destinies, yet, Emancipation of woman, as interpreted and practically applied today, has failed to reach that great end. She pointed to the so-called independence of the modern woman whose true nature her love and mother instincts were rebuked and stifled by the suffragist and early feminist movements 
Goldman's arguments in this text are arguably much more in line with the ideals of modern third-wave feminism than with the feminism of her time, especially given her emphasis on allowing women to pursue marriage and motherhood if they so desired. In Goldman's eyes, the early 20th century idea of the emancipated woman had a tragic effect upon the inner life of woman by restricting her from fully fulfilling her nature and having a well-rounded life with a companion in marriage. A nurse by training, Goldman was an early advocate for educating women about birth control. Like many contemporary feminists, she saw abortion as a tragic consequence of social conditions and birth control as a positive alternative. Goldman was also an advocate of free love and a strong critic of marriage. She saw early feminists as confined in their scope and bounded by social forces of puritanism and capitalism. She wrote, We are in need of unhampered growth out of old traditions and habits. The movement for women's emancipation has so far made but the first step in that direction." When Margaret Sanger, an advocate of access to birth control, coined the term, birth control, and disseminated information about various methods in the June 1914 issue of her magazine The Woman Rebel, she received aggressive support from Goldman. Sanger was arrested in August under the Comstock Laws, which prohibited the dissemination of obscene, lewd, or lascivious articles including information relating to birth control. Although they later split from Sanger over charges of insufficient support, Goldman and Reitman distributed copies of Sanger's pamphlet Family Limitation along with a similar essay of Reitman's. In 1915, Goldman conducted a nationwide speaking tour in part to raise awareness about contraception options. Although the nation's attitude toward the topic seemed to be liberalizing, Goldman was arrested in February 1916 and charged with violation of the Comstock Law. Refusing to pay a $100 fine, she spent two weeks in a prison workhouse, which she saw as an opportunity to reconnect with those rejected by society. Goldman was also an outspoken critic of prejudice against homosexuals. Her belief that social liberation should extend to gay men and lesbians was virtually unheard of at the time, even among anarchists. As Magnus Hirschfeld wrote, She was the first and only woman, indeed the first and only American, to take up the defense of homosexual love before the general public. In numerous speeches and letters, she defended the right of gay men and lesbians to love as they pleased and condemned the fear and stigma associated with homosexuality. As Goldman wrote in a letter to Hirschfeld, "...it is a tragedy, I feel, that people of a different sexual type are caught in a world which shows so little understanding for homosexuals and is so crassly indifferent to the various gradations and variations of gender and their great significance in life." <laughs> Millie Whitkop Millie Witkop was a Ukrainian-born Jewish anarcho-syndicalist, feminist writer and activist. She was the common law wife of Rudolf Rocker. In November 1918, Witkop and Rocker moved to Berlin. Rocker had been invited by Free Association of German Trade Unions FVDG Chairman Fritz Kader to join him in building up what would become the Free Workers' Union of Germany FOD, an anarcho-syndicalist trade union. Both Rocker and Witkop became members of the FOD. After its founding in early 1919, a discussion about the role of girls and women in the union started. The male-dominated organization had at first ignored gender issues, but soon women started founding their own unions, which were organized parallel to the regular unions, but still formed part of the FOD. Witkop was one of the leading founders of the Women's Union in Berlin in 1920. On October 15, 1921, the Women's Unions held a national congress in Dusseldorf and the Syndicalist Women's Union SFB was founded on a national level. Shortly thereafter, Wittkop drafted Was Will der Syndicalistische Frauenbund, What Does the Syndicalist Women's Union Want, as a platform for the SFB. From 1921, the Frauenbund was published as a supplement to the FOD organ Der Syndicalist. Wittkop was one of its primary writers. Wittkop reasoned that proletarian women were exploited not only by capitalism like male workers, but also by their male counterparts. She contended therefore that women must actively fight for their rights, much like workers must fight capitalism for theirs. She also insisted on the necessity of women taking part in class struggle and that housewives could use boycotts to support this struggle. From this, she concluded the necessity of an autonomous women's organization in the FOD. Wittkop also held that domestic work should be deemed equally valuable to wage labor. 
Topic: <laughs> Mujeres Libras. Mujeres Libras English, Free Women was an anarchist women's organization in Spain that aimed to empower working class women. It was founded in 1936 by Lucia Sanchez Sayernil, Mercedes Comapasada and Amparo Pac y Gascon and had approximately 30,000 members. The organization was based on the idea of a double struggle for women's liberation and social revolution and argued that the two objectives were equally important and should be pursued in parallel. In order to gain mutual support, they created networks of women anarchists. Flying day care centers were set up in efforts to involve more women in union activities. The organization also produced propaganda through radio, traveling libraries and propaganda tours in order to promote their cause. Organizers and activists traveled through rural parts of Spain to set up rural collectives and support for women. To prepare women for leadership roles in the anarchist movement, they organized schools, women-only social groups and a women-only newspaper to help women gain self-esteem and confidence in their abilities and network with one another to develop their political consciousness. Many of the female workers in Spain were illiterate and the Mujeres Libras sought to educate them through literacy programs, technically oriented classes and social studies classes. Schools were also created for trained nurses to help injured in emergency medical clinics. Medical classes also provided women with information on sexual health and pre- and post-natal care. The Mujeres Libras also created a woman-run magazine to keep all of its members informed. The first monthly issue of Mujeres Libras was published on May 20, 1936 However, the magazine only had 14 issues and the last issue was still being printed when the Spanish Civil War battlefront reached Barcelona, and no copies survived. The magazine addressed working class women and focused on awakening the female conscience toward libertarian ideas. Topic: <inaudible> Lucia Sanchez Sayernil. Lucia Sanchez Sayernil, December 13, 1895 to June 2, 1970, was a Spanish poet, militant anarchist and feminist. She is best known as one of the founders of Mujeres Libras. She served in the Confederación Nacional del Trabajo CNT and Solidaridad Internacional Antifascista By 1919, she had been published in a variety of journals, including Los Quijotes, Tableros, Plural, Manantial and La Gaceta Literaria. Working under a male pen name, she was able to explore lesbian themes at a time when homosexuality was criminalized and subject to censorship and punishment. Writing in anarchist publications such as Earth and Freedom, The White Magazine and Workers' Solidarity, Lucia outlined her perspective as a feminist. Although quiet on the subject of birth control, she attacked the essentialism of gender roles in Spanish society. In this way, Lucia established herself as one of the most radical of voices among anarchist women, rejecting the ideal of female domesticity which remained largely unquestioned. In a series of articles for Workers' Solidarity, she boldly refuted Gregorio Marignon's identification of motherhood as the nucleus of female identity. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Italian migrant women. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Patterson, New Jersey, was a major center of the anarchist movement. Most of the anarchists in the area were Italian migrants who worked in the mills and women played an important role in the movement. Northern Italian migrants Maria Roda, Ernestina Crivello and Ninfa Baronio founded Paterson's Gruppo Emancipazione della Donna, Women's Emancipation Group in 1897. The group gave lectures, wrote for the anarchist press and published pamphlets. They also formed the Club Feminile de Musica e di Canto Women's Music and Song Club and the Teatro Social Social Theater. The Teatro performed plays which challenged Catholic sexual morality and called for the emancipation of women. Their plays stood in marked contrast to other radical works in which women were depicted as victims in need of rescuing by male revolutionaries. They often traveled to perform their plays, and connected with other Italian anarchist women in Hoboken, Brooklyn, Manhattan and New London, Connecticut. The Patterson Group met regularly for about seven years and inspired other women to form similar groups. 
Their southern Italian contemporaries included Elvira Catello in East Harlem, who ran a popular theater group and a radical bookstore, Maria Raffuzzi in Manhattan, who co-founded Il Gruppo di Propaganda Feminile women's propaganda group in 1901, and Maria Barbieri, an anarchist orator who helped organize the silk workers in Patterson. Anarchist Italian women such as Maria Rota flouted convention and Catholic teaching by rejecting traditional marriage in favor of free unions. In practice, these unions often turned out to be lifelong and monogamous, with the division of labor falling along traditional lines. The anarchist writer Ursilia Cavadogni believed that, the woman is and will always be the educator of the family, that which has and will always have the most direct and the most important influence on the children. Topic. Contemporary developments An important aspect of anarcho-feminism is its opposition to traditional concepts of family, education and gender roles. The institution of marriage is one of the most widely opposed. De Clare argued that marriage stifled individual growth and Goldman argued that it is primarily an economic arrangement. Woman pays for it with her name, her privacy, her self-respect, her very life. Anarcha feminists have also argued for non hierarchical family and educational structures and had a prominent role in the creation of the modern school in New York City, based on the ideas of Francis Ferrer i Guardia, the fine art of labeling, the convergence of anarchism, feminism, and bisexuality, by Lucy Friedland and Liz Heileman, is a piece in By Any Other Name, Bisexual People Speak Out, 1991, an anthology edited by Lorraine Hutchins and Lani Kaahamanu, which is one of the seminal books in the history of the modern bisexual rights movement. Contemporary anarcho feminism has been noted for its heavy influence on ecofeminism. Ecofeminists rightly note that except for anarcho feminist, no feminist perspective has recognized the importance of healing the nature culture division. Contemporary anarcho feminist writers theorists include Maria Mize, Peggy Kornegger, L. Susan Brown, the eco feminist Starhawk, and the post left anarchist and anarcho primitivist Lilith. In the past decades, two films have been produced about anarcho feminism. Libertarias is a historical drama made in 1996 about the Spanish anarcho feminist organization Mujeres Libras. In 2010, the Argentinian film Ni Dios, Ni Patron, Ni Marido was released which is centered on the story of anarcho-feminist Virginia Bolton and her publishing of the newspaper La Voz de la Mujer English, The Woman's Voice. See also Notes Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Acklesburg, Martha A. Free Women of Spain, Anarchism and the Struggle for the Emancipation of Women, AK Press, 2005. ISBN 978-1-902593-96-8. Brown, L. Susan 1995. Beyond Feminism, Anarchism and Human Freedom. Reinventing Anarchy, Again. San Francisco, AK Press. pp. 149-154. ISBN 978-1-873176-88-7. Cornell, Andrew, 2016. Unruly Equality, U.S. Anarchism in the Twentieth Century. University of California Press. ISBN 9780520286264. Ed. Cornell, Andrew, 2016. Quiet Rumors, An Anarcha Feminist Reader, Dark Star, 2002. ISBN 978-1-902593-40-1. Ferguson, Kathy Emma Goldman, Political Thinking in the Streets. Goldman, Emma. Anarchism and Other Essays, 3rd ed. 1917. New York, Dover Publications Inc., 1969. ISBN 978-0-486-22484-8. Guglielmo, Jennifer 2010. Living the Revolution, Italian Women's Resistance and Radicalism in New York City, 1880-1945. University of North Carolina Press. pp. 160-162. ISBN 9780807898985.
Lou, Lydia, Rebecca E. Carl and Dorothy Coe, ed. 2013. The Birth of Chinese Feminism, Essential Texts in Transnational Theory. New York, Columbia University Press. ISBN 9780231162242. Lee, Lydia, Dorothy Coe, ed. 2013. Memorias de Passionaria, 1939-1977, Mi Faltaba España. Editorial Planeta. Marsh, Margaret S. Anarchist Women, 1870-1920, Temple University Press, 1981. ISBN 978-0-87722-202-6. Marshall, Peter. Demanding the Impossible, A History of Anarchism. London, HarperCollins, 1992. ISBN 978-0-00-217855-6. Wexler, Alice. Emma Goldman, An Intimate Life. New York, Pantheon Books, 1984. ISBN 978-0-394-52975-2. Zimmer, Kenyon, 2015. Immigrants Against the State, Yiddish and Italian Anarchism in America. University of Illinois Press. ISBN 9780252097412. Zimmer, Kenyon 2015. Anarchism, A Documentary History of Libertarian Ideas, Volume 1, From Anarchy to Anarchism 300 CE to 1939 ed. Robert Graham includes material by Louise Michel, Charlotte Wilson, Voltairine de Clare, Emma Goldman, Lucia Sanchez Sornal, Mujeres Libras, and Latin American Carmen Lareva, Chinese He Gen, and Japanese Ito Noe and Takamor Itsu, Anarcha feminists. Guglielmo, Jennifer. Dun Soviversive, The History of Italian American Women's Radicalism. OSHA. Archived from the original on June 25, 1998. Topic. External links Anarcha Feminism at Curlie Anarcha Communist Gender News Anarcha Feminist Articles at the Anarchist Library Anarcha Feminism at Infoshop.org Anarcha Modern Anarchist Writings by Women Libertarian Communist Library Archive